When Marvel Comics announced Dan Slott was returning for his own adjectiveless Spider-Man series that was going to be the end of the Spider-Verse, I think most people were dubious. We've come to the end of that story arc. We're going to review issue number seven today. It's worst of the week. I'm absolutely tormenting Doc with this. And one of the worst introductions in comic book history. Doc, how you doing, buddy? I don't understand how anybody could read this comic book and any editor get the draft of this and say, you want us to publish this? Yeah, it's just as bad as that Jason Aaron Avengers comic that we reviewed a few weeks back. Basically, it's the exact same thing with a new debut character here. Let's talk about that, Doc. That's the reason people are buying this comic book. For some reason, this comic book is selling for like $15 or $20 on eBay for the debut of Spider-Boy, one of the lamest introductions of a character I've ever seen. He basically does nothing at the end of the book. He pops in, says, hey, I've been here for a thousand years. Me and Peter know each other, and we've done lots of adventures together. My name's Bailey. Bye. And then he's never seen again. Congratulations. You stole the century's origin. I mean, at least the century was like their Superman. Hey, Marvel had a Superman that nobody remembers. This was a character with the worst design I have ever seen. I mean, there's some atrocious spider character designs. And Doc, I got to ask you a question. Yeah. What is the gender identity of Spider-Boy? I assume because it says boy that it's a male character. But there's no moose now. Apparently, he's got no balls. It's going to be non-binary or trans. Garen fucking T. The name is Bailey. Female to male trans character. 99.9% .9 certain. You couldn't telegraph it more than what it is. I think people that are spending upwards of $20 for this comic book are absolute idiots. There's nothing interesting about this introduction. Maybe in the Edge of Spider-Verse 3 movie or whatever, maybe this character will make a cameo. But does that really make the comic book itself collectible, especially when you read it and everything surrounding it? Well, and including the debut itself is absolute trash. There is 0% chance this character has longevity in any way, shape, or form. I mean, if you got copies to sell and people are out there buying them for 15, 20 bucks, make your money, son. But if you're one of those people that are thinking, ooh, should I get in on the ground floor on this? No, do not be left holding this bag. Holy shit, no. Any additional spider character introduced in the past 15 years that is going to be less interesting or less marketable in the long term than Spider Boy, I don't know which one it is. Isn't Miles Morales just Spider Boy anyway? Exactly. He's already Spider. You already have a Spider Boy in the Marvel Universe. What pisses me off is, is people acting like this is a big deal. And Dan Slott knew no one was buying his Spider Man comic. So he went out there and was like, We got a big debut special cover, Spider Boy. And idiots actually bought it hook, line, and sinker. So if you're one of those idiots, well, congratulations. You got $20 worth of nothing. He did this on his Amazing Spider-Man run, too. He would introduce new costumes, new spider characters, because the, the sales would start tanking. So he'd just start doing spec speculator shit. His entire run on Spider-Man has been built on selling to speculators while the base reader just stops reading, buys, and sticks it in a box. Mark Magley is an artist I personally appreciate a great deal, although his work in this series before this issue was noticeably worse than I've probably ever seen him do on a Spider-Man comic. He certainly brings it back a little bit more here, although I do feel terrible because it's just like a thousand different Spider-Man variant characters swirling around the city. That's what the story is. It absolutely sucks, and... You know, I, I feel bad that he had to waste his time on this. Mark Bagley deserves better. Mark is probably the quintessential Spider-Man artist of an entire generation. But in this one, he either was not getting paid enough, was really, really just mentally checked out, or just didn't give a shit enough and wasn't engaged because this was boring. Everything else that he draws with Spider-Man, I mean, it's got a certain feel to it. He has an energy to him when he's drawing Spider-Man. I don't know if there was a single panel in this comic with less than three spider people in it. Yeah, so I think he did the best that he could with the, with the script that he had. And it did noticeably get better in this issue in comparison to the prior issues, but it's definitely not his best work, definitely not inspired whatsoever. 
And you can kind of see that when you get into the story. One of the things that just annoyed the crap out of me, Peter Parker is in this story. They're in a different multiverse. It's another Peter Parker where he's just a scientist. And they just demean the character so many times with the comic book. It got really annoying. This is why I hate multiverses. You get stupid stuff like this. You mentioned Web Weaver the handicapped spider girl thing that's uh, LGBT, I don't know. Peter Parker, the actual Spider-Man, is creating a gauntlet to save everybody. And this is what Web Weaver says to Peter fucking Parker. You seem like a good guy to have around, Pete. She's lucky to have you. Talking about Silk. So Peter Parker is second fiddle to Silk here. Silk is the star, star of the story. And he's being talked down to by Charlotte fucking Weber. In another moment, he finally steps out there, he's got his gauntlet stud, and he's speaking and he says, why is everyone looking at me? I just brought this for my pal Silk. I'm her guy in the chair. It's like, this is fucking Peter Parker. This is Spider-Man. This is the main event. This is the reason people actually buy the comic book. And they just went out of their way to make him look like a chump, in my opinion. From what I gather here, at some point, this giant wasp thing had changed reality so that Peter Parker never became Spider-Man. Silk was the real spider person in the Marvel Universe. Peter was just some schlubby scientist. And, oh, he also had, like, the, the, the arm crutch thing. When you have a title of Spider-Man and Peter Parker is reduced to the sidekick of Cindy Moon, another Dan Slott creation that he still is trying to get over years and years later, you know you have a bad comic book. God, it's just terrible. If you like Peter Parker, Spider-Man, you're going to hate this comic book. Actually, if you just like comic books, you're going to hate this comic book because it's executed so poorly. Yes, Cindy Moon saved the day in the previous issue. She stopped the totem or whatever, and a bunch of wasps came out, and they would create this another big wasp character that's like a kaiju. And it's the least interesting, exciting thing in the history of comic books. It's just a bunch of Spider-Man characters jumping on her head. And essentially, the big villain of this story is ostensibly a wasp version of the terrible Spider-Man villain, Hive. And their big solution here is jump on its head until it, I don't know, does something to buy time for Peter to finish his wrist gun. Yay. It's gauntlet, Doc. Oh, gauntlet. It's a comic it, it, book. You got to call it a gauntlet. You can't call it a risk gun. This, I don't consider this thing a comic book. This is too bad to be a comic book. It's too cliched and it's too annoying to be a comic book. How do you take a, a, a giant kaiju wasp thing, have them fight 700 variations of Spider-Man at the same time, and not get an interesting panel out of it? Why is it so boring? I don't understand how that is possible. I don't either. You ended up with j four giant spider mechs versus a giant kaiju that kind of weirdly looks like a woman. And it's definitely a woman. The thing's got tits. Yeah. And, and you still couldn't get even this one interesting page out of it. One. No, no, you couldn't. It, and then the ending is the worst part, Doc. Yeah. Peter Parker does save the day. So you got this enormous wasp kaiju lady. I don't know if she's winning, and I don't know if the spider people are winning. They never actually show you that. They're just jumping on her head and, like, pulling her hair and stuff, and I'm not lying about that. He shows up, and he shoots her with his laser, and that's the end of it. There's not even, like, a dramatic explosion scene. You see him aim a laser at her, shoot, and then everything's vanished on the next page. Everything's fine. All the people just kind of come back down to the ground and are like, yay, we won. We never but got the, to see but the, the Spider Verse is over, Doc, because this is end of Spider Verse, and this is the last comic book, right? This is no. the end of the Spider Verse. That's what happened, right? No, no. It, oh, it's a bait and switch. Yes. It, it, no point did the Spider Verse end here. You know what we finished with? More Spider People than we started with, from more universes than we started with. Introductions of new Spider People and. Moreland's still running around. So this is not the end of Spider-Verse. The, the problem wasn't that the Spider-Verse was a retarded fucking idea to begin with, Dan Slott, but that it wasn't big enough. This is your solution every time you fat motherfucker is, no, I didn't have a bad idea. I just didn't do it big enough yet. And so what did you do? You called it the end. You made it bigger by the time you were done. And now it still sucks even worse. I wonder why no one trusts Marvel to deliver anything that they say they're going to in any of their comic books or events. It's a big, it's the world's mystery. 
<laughs> so are you recommending this comic book doc? Uh, no, I'm recommending you turn it into kindling or that you paper train your dog on it. Um, it is not worth reading. It shouldn't no exist. No dog urine should be wasted on this comic book. It deserves a worse fate than that. Well, no, I wasn't thinking the urine. I was thinking the number two, but okay, sure. Uh, that works too. Yeah, you. anything you do to this comic book is other than not read enough. it. Yeah, the, the only thing, everything that you can think of to be done with this comic book should be done except for read it. Doc got a little hot there at the end of the video talking about how just incompetent, purely incompetent Dan Slott is. And this is no secret. We've all known that. In fact, Marvel Comics knows that. They actually did a special on Disney Plus highlighting just what an incompetent dipshit Dan Slott really is. If you haven't seen this, you need to watch it right now. There's also a link in the video description.